everybody. Uh, first of all, uh, I'm Daniele, an Italian biologist, and uh, my interest in genetically modified crops is because they are a uh, hot topic. Uh, people, generally speaking, are afraid of them. Uh, they, have you ever seen this in your meat, for instance? They think they are a threat for health and environment. Uh, for instance, they think they are toxic. And that is due probably because of adverse communication campaigns and also for um, lack of knowledge on what is genetically modified organs or GMO is. So the aim of my talk is to provide some basic knowledge on what GMO is, um, why we need them, and who watches over the safety of these organs. First of all, you have to know what genetic material is. Basically, it's a big set of information uh, that um, is made of DNA and uh, it's like a handbook on uh, how to build and to run an organism. Every word of this handbook is called a gene and provides the information for a feature of the organism that is called a trait. Of course, every organism has its own genetic material. Uh, for instance, we have genes that provide us the color of our eyes or the color of our hair, and different versions of these genes could provide different colors of the hair. <laughs> Another thing you have to know is the legal definition of GMO. A genetically modified organism in European Union is an organism, not in human, that has its genetic material changed in a way that does not occur naturally. So, how does it occur naturally? maybe because of mutation, a process that randomly changes the genetic material providing new traits. For instance, carrots once were white and then some mutation happened, creating new colors. When a new trait with mutation is advantageous for the organism, it reproduces more and uh, spreads this trait into the population and it gets part of the species. With, uh, it's called the natural selection, and we do also, it also a division. For instance, here we have a population of plants, of trees. If we want taller trees, or trees that grow faster, we have to select the taller, and uh, let only them to reproduce. So the next generation will be taller, of course, with some variability. With uh, this uh, approach, we modify a lot the crops we eat, like eggplants during uh, thousands of years. Also, tomatoes and bananas are very different. I show you a specific example of domestication, the name of this approach, with uh, the corn. On the right, you can see the modern corn. On the left, its ancestor, the seed. Uh, with the domestication, we make the modern corn to feed us better. You can see here that look at the point. The fruit of the corn, as put here, is very, very bigger than the fruit of the seed, so it does better. It grows also faster than its ancestor because it has not branches, so uh, has only the stem to grow, and for the same reason it requires less, pa less space to uh, be grown. We can grow more corn than to see in the same area. So these traits that, that are branching, the loss of branching, the lack of brain shattering, with the brain of modern corn don't fall from the ground, and uh, their size, shape, and number were selected by selecting mutation in only three key genes. But nowadays we want from uh, selection and from domestication something more. We want that crops have increased and improved nutrients that um, require less water to be grown and that they have a longer shelf life. We don't like the rotten tomatoes. And we want uh, them also to be resistant to diseases. But remind that this process of domestication of modern corn took 10,000 years. So for these new goals, we uh, may have to wait a bit. 
So we need ways to speed up the process. By now, we use the breathing. Um, let's say that we want this core on the right, the best performer will feel the light variety, um, to have uh, a new trait, like a uh, disease resistance from a new disease that comes from abroad. With the breeding approach, we have to search between all the varieties of corn of the world to find one that is resistant and then mate them together. We grow them together and in a windy day, the magic happens. The wind spread the pollen uh, from the male flowers of one plant from, uh, to the male flowers of the other. And so some offspring will, uh, uh, will uh, grow. Of course, they have to be related to this thing, the same species or related species. The problem is the offspring is that the offspring will not uh, have uh, the same characteristics as the parents. Uh, they will have over uh, these two characteristics, like here. You can see the here of one corn, the here of the two seed, and the here of their offspring is not the same. And we can't even choose which characteristic will pass to the offspring. So the problems are free. Uh, the um, offspring may have or may have not the resistance to the disease, and for sure they will be not so performing like the light variety. So uh, we have to make them again and again and again to reach our goal. And there is also the possibility to have some unwanted traits. An example here in other plants, like tomatoes and potatoes, are uh, the presence is the presence of glycohalkaloids. That are substances that uh, provide them resistance to insects and diseases, but are also toxic for humans. So that is a problem. We need uh, uh, an approach that is more precise. That is the genetic modification technology. With this approach, for reaching the same goal to give a uh, light variety uh, uh, resistance, we have only to find the gene for the resistance in another crop and directly put it into the light uh, form. We do it in a lab. So this process is very fast, requires only one generation. It's very precise, it would only bad genes, so bad trade, and you have another content characteristic, and there is no need for mating. So uh, you don't have to mm, don't need related species. You can also use transgenes from other different organisms. And now I'm going to show you a specific example, specific application of this technology that is the BT core. This happy family, father, mother, and children, are uh, most European corn forests. They are a problem because the, the larvae bore tunnels in the corn plants, the stems, and also in the ears. So there is a direct loss of yield. And there is a problem of molds growing in tunnels. These molds can produce toxins that give us human cancer. So it's a health problem. Usually when you have bugs on your plants, you spray some chemicals, some pesticide like pyrethroid. But in this case, there is also this option for, uh, from um, organic farming that is basically made of uh, bacterium called Bacillus thuringiensis, this guy. Um, it kills specifically moths and butterflies because it produces a toxin, these diamond-shaped things that you can see also under the microscope. Um, that is very specific for moths and butterflies. But we don't need the whole bacterium. We need only the toxin and spread the whole bacterium okay, can cause problems, like uh, uh, it can be washed out by the rain uh, and it can spread from your field into the wild, so killing other moths and butterflies. And so uh, the genetic modification approach is to take the gene for the Bt toxin, in this stands for Bacillus thuringiensis, and to put it into the corn. So the corn itself produces the toxin in its body. And when the larvae of the core, they directly die. That is the result. A regular core air 
with, uh, in comparison with a VD core pair untouched by the lab. But you can see on your faces uh, some questions like, is it safe for our health, this toxin in our food? What about the environment? Who watches over our safety and so on? <laughs> no problem, there is someone that uh, watches over the safety of GM crops. There are many government, governmental agencies in the world. Uh, in Europe, we have a South European Food Safety Authority that from, uh, for each genetic modification event required from companies, companies, companies um, a scientifically sound safety assessment and many, many data on what happened to know it exactly. Uh, coming back to the BT core, uh, the safety assessment required to see if the toxin is toxic also for mammalians, we are mammals. And so they fed mice with uh, levels of BT toxin from 1,000 to 1 million times higher in comparison that we can eat in a year. And of course, no adverse effects. Another test was on allergenicity of this toxin. So we put it into, uh, on our skin to see if there were allergic reactions. And again, no reaction, no adverse effects. From the environmental side, they wanted to know if the toxin stay longer in uh, the environment, if it stay long, many organisms can be uh, in contact with it, and it stay only one or two months, so not so long, and um, the impact on non-target organisms, other moths and butterflies, is also uh, low, because yes, more butterflies like this are sensitive to the heat toxin, but they do not live uh, in um, corn fields, so we are not exposed to the toxin. No exposition, no risk. Uh, here I have a curiosity for you, uh, is a comparison between uh, a regular corn field treated with pyrethroids, so the chemicals, and a VT corn field uh, on the impact on spiders. Of course, um, spiders were safer with VT corn, and this study was uh, run here in Bavaria. So BT core um, is uh, able to protect itself effectively from some insects, uh, has a higher yield than regular corn, requires less plant protection products, prevent health risk, health risk for humans coming from mold toxins, and is not toxic itself, of course, and is not a risk for other insects. So I would say approved. What else can genetically modified crops or plants do for us? For instance, they can prevent some diseases due to lack of nutrients, like the golden rice, or uh, provide better raw materials for industry, or also clean our uh, hair from some pollutants like this apartment plant. So a genetically modified uh, plant is an organism with a new trait due to the addition of a gene they are a good thing, they solve the problem of food safety and other issues with the soil. And they are strictly monitored by governmental organizations. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Mr. So there are, uh, oh, there are lots of questions uh, here. So this uh, is here. Uh, what are we going to say? On the microphone. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, you mentioned transgenes. What are those? What is transgenes? What is transgenes? What is transgenes? What does that mean? Yeah. yeah. Uh, it means a gene that comes from uh, a species that are not sexually related with uh, the species we have uh, modified. Some more questions? Uh, I see that some person is really passionate about it. Hi. <laughs> hey, um, how, how many percent of this genetically modified crops or in particular corn is actually out in market? Uh, in, in Europe, um, 
not so much. But um, for uh, feeding the, the cows, uh, the most of the feed comes from South uh, America and is genetically uh, modified soy. I don't know the question. So, okay. Uh, we have another question, please.